Okay, folks, uh, this is your first time doing Cornell Notes at home. As of right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same format going. So you guys are going to be seeing me take notes or you guys are writing notes that I've already taken down. Eventually, what this is going to lead to is me just giving lectures and showing examples. Um, and it's going to be up to you guys to put it in the Cornell Note format. But we're not there yet, so I want us to just still keep getting used to this Cornell Note process. Um, today's lesson is solving equations. Um, since I'm showing this on different days, make sure you write the date in which you are doing it. Um, I'm also not going to show the format. You guys need to know the format by now. So you guys have, should have drawn a uh, two to two and a quarter or two and a half inch column on the left. Um, and if you don't have lines separating the top, you should already have a line separating the top. Again, today's topic is solving equations. Um, the vocab bank is going to be four different words, and I'm going to go by one by one. Um, something that's good to do is uh, you might want to just pause this and write down the vocab, because uh, then I'm going to talk about it, and you might want to just jot down additional things I say about it. Uh, the most important thing that you want to do is, is take your time on this, okay? Pause, write it down. Pause, write it down. Pause, write it down, okay? If you ever get confused, go back and watch it again, okay? Uh, first thing we want to show is that a variable or symbol um, or letter substituted for an unknown value. Um, usually we use X or Y, okay? It's a letter or symbol substituted for an unknown value. Uh, usually we use X or Y. Uh, coefficient is a number multiplying or dividing a variable. Okay, a number multiplying or dividing a variable. And if you look here, I have the purple coefficients. Um, they're all tied to the variable x. Uh, this one, it's 2 times x. This one, it's 7 fourths times x. This one is x divided by 3. Um, and this one is 5 times x. Okay, anything tied to a variable is considered a coefficient. The next one is a constant, and this is a number adding or subtracting from a variable. Um, so if you look here, here we have 2 times x plus 7. This plus 7 is the constant. So no matter what x is, okay, we're always going to add 7. In this sense over here, it's x minus 4. So whatever x is, we're going to subtract 4 from it. Since it is constantly being subtracted, uh, this is considered a constant. Uh, next is an inverse, inverse, okay? And these are opposite operations that undo each other, okay? Everything we do in algebra, we can undo it also. And the way we do that is with this thing called an inverse, okay? An inverse is an undo button on a calculator or a computer, okay? It's the opposite operation. All right, our first Roman numeral here is going to be solving equations. And a, um, an abbreviation you might see me use for equations is EQN apostrophe S or EQN for equation. Um, that's just kind of my shorthand for it. Um, for A, what we're doing is we are using mathematical inverses to solve for a variable. So pretty much what you're doing is you're choosing a variable and you're going to use mathematical inverses to take things away from the variable. It, the goal is to get the variable by itself. Uh, in B here, addition and subtraction are inverses. What this means is that addition undoes subtraction and subtraction undoes addition to see an example of that if you ever had x plus seven well how do we get rid of the plus seven how do we get rid of addition well the way you get rid of addition is you subtract seven and you'd be left with x okay um vice versa if you had you know 2x minus three how do we get rid of that minus three? How do we get that away from the two X, okay? Well, we gotta use the inverse of addition, okay? Since this is a subtraction, we have to use addition to get rid of it. So we would add three and we'd be left with 
2x. In C, uh, since addition and subtraction are inverses to each other, multiplication and division are inverses of each other. Okay, what this means is that multiplication will undo division and division will undo multiplication. So say you had 2 times x. How do I get rid of this multiplication? The 2 is multiplying. The coefficient is multiplying the variable. The way to get rid of that is if I divide by 2. These will cancel out to form a nice big 1. All I'm left with is x. Okay, same with division. If you see something is being divided, okay, so this x is being divided by 7, okay, we're going to multiply by 7 to make this go away. And we're just left with x. Okay, so multiplication and division are inverses of each other. They undo each other. Uh, something to be aware of is that fractions, okay, fractions are multiplication and division at the same time. So this is multiplying by 4 and dividing by 7 at the same time. So the way we would get rid of that is if we did 7 and 4 like this. Okay, we're going to multiply by 7 and 4. That'll just give us x back. Okay, lastly, uh, what I'm going to put down here is that what we do to one side of an equal sign, we must do to the other side. Okay, um, algebra is all about balance. Algebra is all about balance. Okay, in, in algebra, we can do pretty much anything we want to equations. The, the one rule is that you just have to do it on both sides, okay? Algebra means balance. There has to be balance on both sides of the equation. Okay, next is going to be examples. Okay, moving on to Roman numeral number two. This is going to be one-step examples, okay? And uh, the overall direction here is solve for the variable. Uh, so here's example A. We have x plus 3 equals 7. The first thing you want to do is say, what is happening to x? What is happening to x? Uh, it looks like x is being added with a constant of 3. So whatever x is, we're adding 3 to it. Um, and this needs to equal 7. So I know this is simple, and we can kind of look at this and be like, well, x has to be 4, right? Because 4 plus 3 is 7. But I want to show you algebraically, okay, how this works. So what we're going to do is, this is adding 3, this is adding 3. So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract 3 on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, this will clear up the 3 on the left side, and we'll be left with x. Uh, and then over here on the right side, we're going to have 7 minus 3, which has to be 4. Therefore, x must equal 4. Okay, that's how we're doing this algebraically. What we're doing is we're peeling things away from x. Okay, we're asking what's happening to x, and then we're peeling things away. We're undoing it all. In B, let's try another one. This one says um, 4 plus m equals 11. Okay, the question we're going to ask ourselves is what is happening to m? Well, it looks like 4 is being added to it constantly, okay, because it's a constant. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel things away. We're going to undo the adding of 4. The way we're going to undo this is we are going to subtract 4 on both sides of the equation. This will give us, this is 0 plus m equals 7. Now, we commonly don't write zeros. So again, this just becomes m equals 7. That's our answer. Okay, let's try another one. Here we have k minus 2 equals 13. K 
Okay, I'm using a, a range of different variables. It really doesn't matter which variable you use. Commonly we use X, but I'm just throwing in every, everything I can think of. Uh, so we gotta ask ourselves, what's happening to K? Well, it appears that we're subtracting two. Okay, we're subtracting two. How are we gonna undo a subtraction? We're gonna undo it with addition. So I'm gonna add two on both sides of the equal sign. This is going to give me k equals 15. Um, again, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of things that are touching my variable, and I'm doing that by using a mathematical inverse on both sides of the equal sign. Uh, let's do a few more. Now, let's see, this one's going to be x divided by 2 equals 10. Okay, so this 2 is dividing x. It's dividing x. Uh, the way we undo division is we're going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on each side of the equation. Uh, that will undo the division. So I'm left with x equals 10 times 2 is 20. Let's do just one more together. Uh, this one's going to be... 3x equals 36. We need to ask ourselves, what is this coefficient doing to x? Well, it's multiplying x. So what we'll do is we'll undo multiplication by using division. So we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. And this will leave us with x equals 12. What's great about solving for variables is that if we ever want to check ourselves, we totally can. All we have to do is plug what we found back into the equation. Let's use e as an example. I got x equals 12, so I'm going to do 3 times 12 equals 36. Uh, is this a true statement? Well, 36 does indeed equal 36, so we know we have the right answer. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys with two more, or three more. Let's go three more. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I'm going to leave you guys with um, this. Um, and I'm going to leave you guys with the oh, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. Uh, this one's a little tricky. This is actually called a two-step. This is called a two-step equation. Um, and I'll let you guys try and figure out why this is called a two-step. Um, so I'm going to let you guys try these on your own. In your notes, we'll go over them next time I see you. Do not draw the line for the summary. Okay, do not draw the line for the summary. In fact, if you, do, if you need help remembering that, go right over here, three. Um, and you could put two-step equations because that'll be part of the next video all right folks i hope this worked out for you um if you have any comments or questions please feel free to email me or check in with me during class or tutorial uh we'll talk to you guys soon